So this video was going to be a thank you for reaching 2000 subscribers and then for reaching 3000 and now it's a thank you for reaching over 6000 subscribers. Seriously, thank you so much guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And so since this was the most highly voted for on my poll of what video you'd like to see, here are my top 10 characters of all time. Am I talking too much? Oh, people are always telling me I do and I can't stop if I make my mind up to do it. Allow me to start this list by revealing just how old I actually am with the memory of my grandfather videotaping movies off the television for me to watch. One of those movies was the Kevin Sullivan adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, which is where I met and fell in love with Anne Shirley, the wonderfully chatty, imaginative redhead who has held my heart ever since. Not only was Anne an incredibly fun and engaging character with her wild speeches and vivid daydreams, but I also found her to be incredibly relatable, especially when it came to her chatterbox ways. Being forever in trouble at school for talking and distracting other students, I saw myself reflected in Anne and her ridiculous inability to shut up. Her crazy imagination, passion for writing, and frequent accidents and mishaps also reminded me of myself, making her that much dearer to me as I struggled alongside her. As I grew older and started to see the character through more mature eyes, I became enamored with Anne's determination, her iron will, and refusal to give up even when the odds were stacked against her. She had an incredible drive and passion to succeed, and a wild desire to see more in the world around her, while her kind-heartedness and compassion brought out the best in others. Watching her mature from a wild, stubborn, and often ridiculous girl into a driven and spirited young woman was amazing and inspiring. The flaws she dealt with and overcame along the way made her even more relatable, and I will continue to love and root for her for many years to come. I heard once Winston Churchill read a book every night, even during the Blitz. He said it made him think better. It's how I like to run things, I think. I don't usually fall for male characters the way I do for female ones, but if there is an exception, you can bet that it will be a broody, self-loathing asshole with extreme parental issues. James Sawyer Ford is kind of the epitome of this trope, and this partially explains how he crept onto this list. Add to that his incredible growth and characterization over the series, and we end up with a character I love with all my heart. Although, this wasn't always the case. I kind of despise Sawyer in my first watch of the show, as the first season is not kind to him, as we see his very worst traits with only a few glimpses of the character he would eventually become. Over many rewatches, the evolution of Sawyer's character emerged and we got to see the depth to him, the way his past traumatized him, his deep, deep self-loathing, and the way he self-sabotaged because of it. We got to see him grow and evolve into a compassionate, kind, and level-headed human someone who knew how to take charge and be a leader without losing his cheeky fun side and his core character traits. Lost is a fantastic show for characterization, and Sawyer is a great example of this. A character who started out as nothing more than a self-centered con man evolved into a strong and selfless human. Sawyer worked his way into my heart and has never left since, and I will forever love and defend him and enjoy the hell out of watching his arc whenever I revisit the series. I was Darla for so long, then I wasn't, I, I wasn't anything, I just stopped. If you've spent any time on my channel or my Tumblr account, you'll know that I have a huge vampire fetish, doubly so for female vampires, and Darla is one of the best out there. Starting as a fairly one-dimensional and bubblegummy character on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she was literally resurrected on Angel and given a wonderful character arc, which expanded upon her characterization and added some much-needed depth to her character. Given the circumstances of her resurrection, visit my Angel and Dala video for further expansion, we get to see several different sides to Dala, all of which are wildly fun to watch. As a soulless vampire, she is wicked, smart, sexy, fun, and so watchable as she wreaks havoc across the continents. As a human with a soul, we get to see her more vulnerable side and get to know her on a deeper level than we could have when she was a soulless monster. Her struggle with her soul and the effect it has on her is one of the more heart-wrenching aspects of her arc, and when she is once again turned into a vampire, 
the upheaval of emotion she goes through makes for addictive and endearing watching. While her pregnancy and sacrifice for her child does unfortunately look more unsavory in light of both Cordelia's and Fred's deaths by mystical pregnancy later in the series, Dala's final arc is fitting for her character and adds another layer of complexity to her characterization. Watching her struggle with feeling the soul of the child and the realization that she loves him always gets to me, and I will always love her beautiful sacrifice for Connor. Her arc is one of my favorites across the Buffyverse, and I feel that it ended at a perfect place and in the perfect way. I have a life, and it only goes in one direction, forward. Another self-loathing and broody man with daddy issues, Donald Draper, took me completely by surprise, and I honestly never expected to end up loving his character as much as I do. Mad Men as a series is fantastic when it comes to developing characters and building solid characterization, and Don Draper is the best example of that. Pair that with the absolutely perfect casting of John Hamm, who brought all sorts of nuances to the role, and you have a character that you cannot tear your eyes away from. Don is interesting in that he's a character that I find myself deeply loathing at times, but somehow simultaneously loving all the time. He is so well written that every one of his actions, even the terrible and destructive ones, can be explained away. The roots of his issues are slowly revealed and explored over the seasons until we know the character in our bones, seeing how every trauma in his past has led to the reckless and terrible person he has become. It is impossible to not feel sorry for him as his past is revealed and we see him struggle and fail in the present, causing pain and destruction everywhere he goes. Don is compelling and intriguing, and there are so many layers to unpack with his characterization. Just when you think you've found out everything there is to know and have him all figured out, the show drops another reveal, another trauma, another reason for Don's terrible behavior, and all of this works to make the character incredibly endearing, even as we hate him for his actions. The more I rewatch Mad Men, the more I fall in love with Donald Draper and his incredibly complex characterization. I felt I had to choose between doing the right thing and being successful. The weird part is, I kind of enjoyed being underhanded. Well, we all know how much I love Lana Lang, considering I have a 20 minute long video discussing just that. But for this video's sake, let me quickly elaborate on how much I freaking adore Lana Lang and how I have from the very moment I started watching Smallville. Being of South Asian heritage, I do tend to gravitate towards Asian characters on that basis alone but Lana was so much more than just that for me. From the very first viewing of Smallville, I found her to be endearing, kind, resilient, and incredibly watchable. And when I found out about the deep-rooted hatred for her in the fandom, I was appalled. Here was an independent and multifaceted female character who stood up for herself and others, who was intelligent and compassionate and strong, and who had overcome so much pain and trauma and emerged as a resilient and empathetic person. And the fandom just hated her. Lana's fierceness, her independence, and her refusal to be mistreated has kept me loving the character for all these years. While I do agree that Lana's arc was stretched out for too long on the series, I will never complain about having more time with her, and I only wish that more of the fandom could see her the way I do and love her for the amazing character that she is. If you want more detail on why she's so amazing, check out my video explaining why she doesn't deserve the hatred she received, and hopefully you will see her through my eyes and come to love her as much as I do and always will. We leave and it's game over. The Yerks win. Everything we saw, it'll be because we made it happen, not the Yerks. Us. We can't sit back while they make the world like that. No. If you were a 90s child like I was, chances are you read at least one Animorphs book. Me? I read the whole series and found myself utterly in love with the fierce, wonderful, terrifying Rachel Berenson, one of my earliest heroes, and the first truly complex character I came across in a book aimed at tweens. All of the Animorphs characters have deep and complex characterization, but none more so than Rachel, whose character was fascinating and endearing right from the beginning. A true contradiction, Rachel is presented as a beautiful, blonde, clueless type girl with a dark and terrifying violent streak to her. A character who entered a war because she was righteous and hated injustice and ended up falling in love with the kill and the violence, who became the team member who got her hands dirty and did what needed to be done when the others couldn't. 
she was the first female character I had ever come across who was allowed to be so flawed while still showing how goodness and kindness resided within her, who was so violent and bloodthirsty, but at the same time, compassionate and righteous. As I've gotten older and revisited all the books I loved as a child, Animorphs is one of the few series that has held up, and Rachel Berenson is still a character I greatly admire, respect, and love. The complexities to her characterization are even more apparent the older I get, and with every reread of the series, I somehow manage to love her more and more. I fought for so long for redemption, for a reward. Finally, just to beat the other guy, but I never got it. Speaking of broody, self-loathing men, I can't go past my main vampire angel, the tortured vampire with a soul who tries every day to be better, to do better, and who carries his own show with such strong characterization and an amazing personal arc. I have loved Angel since he was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, when, yes, he was a slightly underdeveloped character, but the building blocks for future development were always there. Angel as a character is fascinating because he has so many layers to him. Constantly fighting with the demon within and his vampiric nature, he feels the burden of his soul so heavily and he desperately wants redemption and forgiveness for all his heinous crimes as Angelus. He has a huge heart and a massive desire to do good, but a true darkness also lives within him and the dueling sides to his personality make him intriguing, complex and so incredibly watchable. He struggles on a daily basis to keep his darkness in check and to do good in the world, and he often fails and falls, picks himself up again, and never forgets his mantra of if nothing he does matters, then all that matters is what he does. Spanning two shows and developing across a total of eight seasons, Angel grows from merely the Slayer's love interest into a true champion, someone who will fight for the little guy, help the helpless, rescue the damsel in distress, and do it all while keeping the darkness inside him in check. He is a wonderfully layered and complex character, and with every Angel rewatch, my love for him only increases. If I told you who I was, if I told you everything that I know, you'd kill me. Juliet Burke was one of those characters who, as soon as she appeared on the screen, I just felt in my bones, oh, it's you, you're going to be my favorite. From her first introduction, I found her character fascinating, especially because her loyalties were so ambiguous. Even before we knew exactly whose side she was on, we saw what a strong character she was, being able to hold her own against other characters, keeping a level head, and showing kindness and compassion to others. As the seasons went on and her backstory emerged, Juliet became a much deeper and more complex character, and the reveal of how abused and mistreated she had been added layers and strength to her characterization. Learning that she came to the island to help pregnant women and was then forced to watch them die time and again, seeing the toll it took on her, and empathizing with her pain helped me to love the character more, and all I wanted was for her to escape and find freedom and happiness. The time jump provided her that, and seeing her happy, safe, secure, and content within herself and within her relationship with Sawyer was amazing. There are many characters whose deaths I still get angry over, but few make me as angry as Juliet Burke's death, as it was completely unnecessary and added purely for shock and drama. Juliet could have grown more as a character, and having her around for the final season could have added levity and a calming presence, not to mention how we could have seen her and Sawyer escape and build a life together. Instead, all that potential was wasted for shock value, and I will never forgive the Lost Riders for killing off my favorite character in such a horrendous and unfair manner. It's just that with all of this transcendence comes much emphasis on perfecting oneself. Ah, uh, this gives you a problem. <sighs> I'm hopelessly flawed. Little Women is my favorite novel of all time and the 1994 adaptation is one of my favorite movies, and Joe March's character plays a big part in that. From the moment I was first introduced to the story, I loved Joe's character, as I not only deeply identified with many of her characteristics, but also found her to be fun, entertaining, and endearing. Being a raging tomboy when I was younger and having an intense dislike of gender rules and expectations, I greatly identified with Joe's non-conforming ways, her clumsy and boyish mannerisms, and the way in which she constantly got herself into scrapes due to her refusal to follow societal rules. I also loved her passion and exuberance, as well as her bluntness and hot temper, 
Once again, traits which I also saw in myself but had trouble reconciling. Joe helped me through many tough times, and often when I was feeling down about my own shortcomings, it helped me to read about hers and how she overcame them. As the novel progressed and Joe grew and matured, I was able to see hope for myself and cheered her on as she overcame the obstacles in her way. Over the years, Jo has become dearer to me, as I've come to appreciate her growth and maturation and how she betters herself and learns from her mistakes. She is a character who grows in a very organic way, learning and overcoming her faults while still keeping her core character traits, and my love for her will probably continue to grow as I reread and rewatch this story time and again. I don't obsess. I think intensely. Prudence Melinda Hallowell is, and always will be, my favorite charmed one. A polarizing character, Prue is strong, fierce, takes no one's crap, and has a surprisingly huge capacity for compassion and empathy. She has a strong sense of justice and always stands up for what she believes, all traits which I find greatly admirable. Prue is another character I identify with especially with regards to being an elder sibling and feeling the responsibility of looking out for younger family members. I also deeply identified with the way in which she was often vilified for being assertive and dominant, called bossy and controlling, when in reality, she was just a strong personality, and the unfairness of not being allowed to be dominant and female made me empathize with her even more. I loved watching her stand up for herself and others, refuse to alter her character for anyone, and always stay true to who she was, no matter who opposed her or tried to take her down. Prue is one of the most self-assured characters I have ever come across, and this confidence is so amazing to see in a female character, even today as our media becomes more progressive. Prue is an incredibly well-written and layered character with many different sides to her. She has a real wild side, is brave, stubborn, and righteous, but she is also deeply flawed and has to work on these flaws over the seasons. She is such a multifaceted and nuanced character, so much so that I have an entire video dedicated to her. I have loved her character since the first moment I watched Charmed, and I will for the rest of my days.